Yesterday, the South African Human Rights Commission launched a national report on service delivery following the spate of protests, which were mostly cases or violent cases. It has found that a lack of service delivery, such as adequate housing and access to clean water, were the causes of the majority of protests. Despite the progress made since 1994, most South Africans are still battling to get access to basic services. The research for the national report was conducted by various institutions, and joining us in studio to talk a little bit more about the findings is uh, Commissioner uh, Mohammed Shafi Amemia from the uh, South African Human Rights Commission. Um, it's a very good good morning to you and thanks so much for joining us here on the program, Advocate. Thank you very much for having me and good morning to you and your listeners. All right. Now, since 1994, approximately 12.5 million people have received access to water. I'm just reading uh, some of the findings. It's estimated in the report that 3.7 million families received home. Uh, homes. How far are we um, getting with this? I mean, that's, that seems like a small amount, 3.7 million. Yeah, I think we must put it in context. In 1994, there was this grand plan to, to build houses for, for poor people. And we've come a long way since then because out of the 3.7 million people that were given the opportunity, 2.8 million houses were built, translating into 12.7 million people receiving houses, which is about 20% of the population yeah. who would not otherwise have qualified for houses. So that, that in itself was a good progress. And thereafter, what was going to happen is there was a 1% budget uh, of the GDP that was set aside for this kind of progress. Unfortunately, what has happened over the period of time... Um, a lack of coordination between the excellent policies and legislation that was there uh, and the uh, lack of uh, accountability and interface between the three levels of government, uh, national government, provincial government and local government, that caused a problem in the sense that um, things kind of fell apart. But I think what we need to also understand here is that um, there were a lot of other dynamics here as well. We had um, a robust housing plan in place. Mm. But then what had happened was government didn't uh, kind of put us, uh, you know, uh, there was a lack of accountability for those private contractors that were starting to build those houses. What the result is that the quality of the houses deteriorated and then surely workmanship started. Yeah, yeah. As a result of that, a lot of wastage of expenditure was, um, was expended on, on these kind of uh, programs because what had happened was we had incomplete houses, houses of poor quality, and this is what caused consternation in the communities. Yeah. For the very same communities that we were supposed to be building quality homes because they're poor. They have dig the right to dignity. And that, take that took away from their dignity as well. Yeah. The result of that is that communities started crying on the ground and we talk about protest politics out here uh, in, in the form of demonstrations and so forth. In as much as there's a right to demonstrate uh, for, your, uh, for your socioeconomic rights, Equally so, there is um, an obligation for you as a protester to respect the infrastructure that was built since 1994 mm -hmm. and not burn it down as a result of your frustrations. What also concerned the Human Rights Commission in this report was a question of evictions, right? And the role of the Red Ants and the Anti-Land Invasion Unit in the Western Cape uh, in the way and the Board of Sheriffs, I mean the sheriffs as well, how they conducted themselves. And it, it was found that they do so in an undignified way. This kind of causes a lot of tensions on the communities on the ground itself. Yeah, indeed. Um, when, when, if, we, if we just get back to a little bit of, of basic services, you know, when we look at Section 26 of the Constitution, it says that every citizen is entitled to uh, service delivery, basic service delivery. This is not happening in the country. I mean, uh, uh, so are we really breaking the law by doing this? I mean, is that, is that in, in essence what's happening for the citizens of South Africa? You know what happened? The, the, uh, and that's a very good question. We need to hold the state accountable because remember, we are a constitutional democracy and everybody is accountable in terms of the law. Now, by the state having excellent pieces of legislation and not living up to the Bill of Rights, which is the supreme law of the land, that in itself is an indictment and it's a cause of concern. Yeah. And people have a right to take action in the, uh, to, to effect their rights. We are talking about socioeconomic rights. And the backlog that we're talking about in this country is basically about the socioeconomic realities where people are denied those rights. Now, this is scary because we're talking about a, a 2030 National Development Plan that wants to close the gap between the rich and the poor. 
right? Now we're 15 years away from that, and that's three elections away from that. So unless we put a grand plan together and make it happen, we are not going to get there. Now that also will mean that South Africa is failing on its international obligations because we have also signed the Covenant on International Convention on Socioeconomic Rights as well. And we have endorsed the Sustainable Development Goals uh, by the United Nations as well. Okay. So, so in that case, yes, if we do not uh, you know, roll up our sleeves, we are going to come short. Indeed we are. Um, Advocate, is there a place that people can go and, and, and read the report uh, that, that, has, that has been released in the studies? Yes, you Aren't can go website? on. It, it's on the website as well. And if you can call in to the, uh, the, the South African Human Rights Commission, uh, they will make it available for you. Okay. The website is www.sahrc.gov.za. Uh, Okay, excellent. Thank you very much uh, for joining us here on the program. Just talking about the, the, the national report on service delivery following these uh, spate of protests that we've been seeing all over the country. And you do know that we have got the local government elections coming up next year. And that is just going to see these, uh, these protests getting harder and more furious throughout the country. So it's something to watch out for. Um, Advocate Mohammed Shafi Amir Mir, thank you very much. Appointed full-time commissioner in the South African Human Rights Commission for a seven-year term. All right.